All right, welcome to part B of the introduction to probability lecture. Now that we've covered some definitions and some ground rules, make sure that your probabilities are between zero and one. They can't be negative, can't be bigger than one. And we've reviewed some symbols, the complement meaning not, intersection meaning and, union meaning or, and this up and down bar for conditional probability, which means given or of, and just to pick up where we left off last time, this uh, probability that you're rich given you have a college degree being 30%, we can interpret in two ways. Um, you can say it's the chance that someone is rich given that they have a college degree. Or the easier, more natural way to explain a conditional probability is to start in the middle, actually. Start at the bar and say um, the answer, 30 30%, 0 .30, um, 30% of people with a college degree are rich. So start, in the, you know, start at the end, 30%, 0 .3, of college degree recipients are rich. And either of those ways are fine way to, to think about what a conditional probability is. So it's not just a probability of being rich, it's rich conditioned on we're only looking at people with a college degree. So the thing after the bar is certain. We know we're talking about people with college degrees. What's probable, what's possible, is that they're rich. Now let's dive into seven probability rules here. and. These rules are intuitive after you get used to them, and that's what we're going to try to do in this video. Let's get familiar with what these seven videos are saying. So the first rule is called the complement rule, which says that the probability of, remember that C for complement means not, the probability that you are not A, it can be calculated as 1 minus the probability that you are A. Now, let's look at a picture of what we're talking about here using a Venn diagram. Now, Venn diagram, they're named after a, a st statistician named John Venn who lived and, and worked in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And a Venn diagram, we have this red box here. Let me move this B so we're not confused by it. Uh, this box represents everything that can happen. So the whole box is one, 100 percent, and everything that can happen is inside this box. Now here's A. A could be that, uh, what's the probability that you are rich, for example. Now suppose the probability that someone is rich is 0.2. Nah, that's probably not rich. Let's call it 0.1. Okay, so let me um, let me put a probability here. 0 0.1 is the probability that someone is rich, and that's A. So everyone that's rich is inside this circle. Everyone that's not rich is outside the circle. So A complement is people who are not rich. So let me move that C right there. So if 0.1 out of the whole one or 10% out of 100% are rich, how many people have to be outside of that circle of people that are rich? Well, it's 1 minus that. 1 minus 0.1 will give you that the other 0.9, 90% of people are A complement, not A, not rich. So that's all the complement rule is telling us. Second rule, addition rule tells us the relationship between unions and intersections. The addition rule here says that the probability that someone is either A or B you can get. So you want to get we want to get everybody together that is either A or B. We can take the people that are A, add the people that are B, and subtract off the people that are both. Now, why do we have to subtract off people that are both? This is the most confusing thing about the addition rule. In order to visualize this, I want you to think about a room full of people. And we're going to go through this rich and educated um, 
that we were thinking about before. So let's look at people who are prosperous and let's call that P. And people who are educated, we'll call that E. People will say that have a four-year college degree. And by looking at U.S. Census data, 12.5% of people are prosperous. And prosperous, I believe, in this definition is uh, they live in a household where they made more than $75,000 a year. So that's somebody who's prosperous. Educated means that you have a four-year degree. And 23.7% of the heads of households in the United States had a college degree. I, I believe this is back in 1990. And if you look at the census data, the probability that someone randomly chosen is both prosperous and educated is 0.077, 7.7% of the population. Now, we can use this addition rule, but let's picture a room full of people. Suppose we had a thousand people in a room, and we asked those thousand people in a room, okay, everyone who is prosperous, raise your hand. So out of a thousand people, Raise your hand if you're prosperous. Well, 125 people would raise their hand and say that I'm prosperous. Now we'd say, okay, everyone who is educated, raise your hand. What would happen? Well, if the probability that you're educated is 0.237, then 237 out of 1,000 people would raise their hand saying that they are educated, right? Now. What if we wanted to get everyone who is either um, prosperous or educated, that union? How many people in the room are either prosperous or educated? What you might want to do is to add up, well, these 125 people raised their hand saying they're prosperous, and these 237 people raised their hand saying that they were educated. Can't we just add the 125 people who said that they are prosperous plus the 237 people who said they were educated? And the answer is no. You can't do that because some people raised their hands twice. Some people were prosperous and educated. How many? Well, according to these numbers, the probability is 0.077 or 7.7%, which would be 77 out of this 1,000 people that we're talking about. So 77 are both. They raised their hands twice. And so if we add up the 125 people over here who said they were prosperous, plus the 237 people who said they were educated, we'll be counting those 77 people twice because they raised their hand twice. So what we have to do in order to calculate a union properly is we can take the 125 people, add the 237 people, but we have to subtract off those people who raised their hands twice. That's the intersection, the people who are both educated and prosperous. So in order to calculate this using probabilities, to calculate this union, we would take the probability that someone was a, prosperous in this case, is what we're thinking of, 0.125, plus um, 0.237, 23.7%, and then minus, we have to subtract off those people that we counted up twice. We don't want to double count anyone. So minus 0 0.077. And what we're going to get is the union is 0.2. 285. So 0 0.285 is the union. So that means that out of the people in the room, 28.5% of people are either prosperous or educated or both. Because we're including the people who are both. But we are only including them once. That's why we subtract that off, right? It's because we double counted it. It's not because we don't want to count them. We just only want to count them once. 
Now you can see this necessity for subtracting off that intersection even more clearly if uh, in some cases you're going to get an answer bigger than 1 if you don't subtract off the people who raise their hands twice. Right? So imagine again we have this room full of a thousand people. So in a room of a thousand people suppose we asked everyone to raise their hand who is uh, a female. Right? And suppose out of a thousand people 800 people in the room were female. Right? That would be a probability of being female of 0.8. of the people in that room were female. And then we say, okay, um, people in this room, do you have children? Raise your hand. And out of the people in this room, perhaps 700 people have children. And so the probability that someone in that room has a child is, um, let's call that C, equals 0.7. Now, let's calculate the union. What is the probability that someone is either female in this room or has children? Right? So using the addition rule, we'd want to take the probability that someone is female plus the probability that somebody has children and subtract off the intersection. Well, we don't know the intersection yet, but let me show you, you know, let's just think about why it's important to subtract it off because if we don't, we're going to end up with taking the 800 females, 80%, plus 70% of the people in the room have a ch have children, we're already up to 150% of the people in the room. And you can't have a probability that's bigger than one. So we're going to have to subtract off the people that are in the audience that raise their hands twice. The females who also have children. The intersection. So let's suppose that upon further study we find that it is uh, 600 people uh, are females and have children. So that would be the probability of the intersection um, C and F and C would be 0.6. So subtracting off that 0.6 is going to give us a reasonable answer. And so minus 0.6 would give us 0.9. 90% of the people in the room are either female or have children.